This week's episode of the Living Outrageously podcast is brought to you by the Samurai Lounge. Join your fellow samurai in this exclusive group by signing up at livingoutrageously.com. Dudes, welcome to the Living Outrageously podcast. This is the show where we teach you how to stop living a boring life and start living outrageously. My name's Dave Thompson, that is Matt the Freaking Man Kelly, and this is the show for passionate, creative, and intelligent people who want to step up and make their dent in the universe. Matt the Freaking Kelly, I might be falling out of shot, but this is the show where impossible is an opinion, and today, my friend, we're continuing on a roll from last week. Are you addicted to certainty? Dave Thompson, this is a freaking awesome topic. We're talking about core needs here again. And the, the question that people may not be asking themselves, addicted to certainty. But before we do, before we do, massive shout out to the Samurai Lounge. These guys are killing it, Dave. I'm so, so excited about the people who have just reached out and joined this ridiculous, free, outrageous community. Dude, it's been sensational. I've been talking to members of the Samurai Lounge all around the world, been staying up to ridiculous hours of the morning. <laughs> And I'm just so impressed with the quality of the samurai in the Samurai Lounge. People are writing books, they're traveling, they're starting businesses, they're making their existing business go to the next level. So, so impressive, Matt Kelly. And just a pleasure. I I really want to give out one special shout out to Stephanie, who just did some major, major steps with her book. Yeah, listen, Stephanie's absolutely killing it, and we know that Stephanie is an epic samurai, so massive congratulations to you, Stephanie. Um, we know that you can't do this on your own. It's it's really hard to be a samurai by yourself, and that's why the Samurai Lounge exists. If you want to get in and join us, we're both talking about the awesome projects that we're working on all the time, and we're embracing what all of the, the, the passionate samurai crew are all doing together. So jump in, livingoutrageously.com, sign up on the right-hand column right there, and you get... Instant email, instant email. Go in, join, request entry. We will approve and you will be basking in the samurai glory. Dave Thompson, it's amazing. Much like basking in the glorious Gold Coast weather this afternoon, Matt Kelly, I just thought we should share with viewers, before we get down to the business and the topic today, we are here uh, in my new... uh, Humble abode. My humble abode. It's called Amalfi Studios and it has every activity under the sun. And now... We get to podcast. So if there are some boats go past, then please bear with us. I think this we tested the mic before. It's pretty good, Matt Kelly. So enjoy the scenery. And shall we get down to the business? Let's do it. Let's do it, Dave. Yeah, no, it is a, it is a great place, and I think the audio will be fine. So let's do it. We're jumping right into this. This is all about certainty and whether and or not you are addicted to it. Let's do it. Because let's face it, Matt Kelly, if you are addicted to certainty... It's going to fuck up your life, man. I want to share by starting with a quote from one of the LOP's finest. Mm. And the quote is, and we got sent it via email today. Mm. The quote is, resist the urge to be certain about everything. Mm. Hmm. Connor J. Hastings. Mm. Now, many of you would have heard us talking about Connor over the days because he writes these great fables. He's a very good storyteller. He's not in the Samurai Lounge, Matt Kelly. What? What? <laughs> wait, Connor is not in the Samurai Lounge. So wait, wait, Connor, Connor, I am calling you out. So you've shared epic stories with us on a one-on-one basis. We are giving you a chance to share these with a much bigger audience. And I suspect a group of people who will be able to give you some solid feedback. Um, and let's face it, that's what we all want. Connor, go register. We will give you premium level access, which might be the same as everybody else's, but we will embrace you and celebrate because, man, it, this is what it's about. Right. Or not. Like, what, or, 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 or whatever, whatever, whatever works for you, Connor. So, but folks, today, today, certainty can really, can really fuck you up. So let's talk about how this works. So if you're, a lot of people are addicted to certainty in the fact that I must have a job. I must have a stable income and I must have health insurance and someone must love me and I must know where my next meal is coming from. All these all these sort of things that they're rules for certainty and we learn these rules for certainty at school, Matt Kelly. Even before school, this is what's really, really interesting about this environment is that 
when you go to school, you, you go, and even, man, in grade one, kids are doing tests. So they're being told that you learn this. If you get it right, you get a tick. If you get it wrong, you get a big red cross, and then you get a bad mark. And then your parents have to come in and talk about why it wasn't right. It's very black and white here. There's no grey. There's no, there's no Fifty Shades. Either uh, or no deal. No deal. No deal. And that's the, the challenge here is you're being taught that for certainty you must get, you must have the correct answer, the mm. only right answer, and there's only one. So from a very young age, you're being conditioned to think that there is a right and wrong way. And for me to have the ultimate certainty, for me to be correct the whole way through, I've got to know what's right. Mm. Exactly. And this, this particular point messed me up for quite a while because I went to the traditional school and I went to the traditional sort of university and I did very well at school and it was very much, you must be right. And so I got my certainty out of being right. Now, I did have to work hard for it. I studied very hard and I was a high achiever like many of the Samurais are. But if I was wrong, that stressed me out massively. For me to be wrong was like my world caving in. And you know what? The question that I always ask myself, Matt Kelly, was, am I doing this right? Mm. And it's an interesting question and it's a very good question in many ways because it pushes me and pushes me to achieve and strive to go to the next level and and, and and identify where there could be challenges in your path that you may not have already witnessed at all. So yeah, it's, it, you know, it's, it is, it is in, in some ways it is a great question to be asking. Absolutely. But in other ways, can you see the amount of stress that it caused me? Because if I wasn't right, if I wasn't right, well, I didn't have the certainty. And everyone at school is putting certainty up on this pedestal. If you're certain that you're right, then certainty is God, you know? You know, cert- can you see can you see the conflict there, Matt Kelly? I absolutely can. And the the question I would like to throw back to Dave and also all of you who are who are, who are just going back and thinking about your schooling experience, were the people that you are you were asking the permission from or the question to, am I right? Is this correct? Were, were they right? Did they know? Were you modeling the best? Because we talk about modeling people. Were you asking the question to people that you like you aspired to be like, or were you asking the people that were just the, the the dictators, the rule makers, the people who said who were put up and said this is correct? Like, it's a very interesting question. It is because if you want to be like if if that was your teachers that you were looking up to, like did you want to be a teacher? And if you if you're a podcast viewer and you are a teacher, that's fantastic. I think teachers are, are great. And if you want to be a teacher, then by all means model a teacher. But if you don't want to be a teacher, well. Maybe your teachers aren't the best models in some respects. Interesting, like, flip side here, Matt Kelly, is that the level of uncertainty that you can handle often directly relates to the amount of wealth that you have. Mm, No, this is absolutely true. It's absolutely true. If you are willing to be a risk taker, if you're willing to to take chances, and that's really embracing uncertainty and we know that, then it's the people who are unsure but take the chance and take the step and will push forward through the uncertainty that reap the ultimate reward. Like in in many ways, you know, entrepreneurs, they can be the biggest risk takers and and they're the ones who can sit there and go, I don't know if this is going to work. I've, I never know, but I'm going to try, and I'm going to keep trying. And, I'm, and, and, and when, I, when I hit it and I go, oh, actually, that wasn't right, I'm not going to go, that wasn't right, I have to do it the right way, therefore I have to stop and do it a different way completely. They don't do that. They, don't, they go, ah, that wasn't right. Okay, pivot, change, go again, yep. go next. again, go again. Next. And next. they keep going. Next, next, next. Mm. Exactly. And it's, it's interesting if we compare the mindset of – People in the corporate world and the traditional life plan, the deferred life plan, they are addicted to certainty. They need to be certain that their idea will work compared to samurai who have the view that, well, you know what? I think this will work. So let's try it and find out. Matt Kelly and I, when we started this podcast, we had no idea if this would work. We thought we were crazy. We literally thought we were crazy. And Matt Kelly's mum was the only viewer, and then Eric Svensson came along, and we're like, "Well, maybe we're not, maybe we're not crazy, or, or maybe we're maybe we're crazy." Me, him, Kelly's mum, and Eric Svensson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the one thing that was interesting there was the only certainty. We, we, to me, we had two aspects of certainty when we started. One was we have certainty in that we know that we can create it, 
and deliver it. We had no certainty as to what would happen next, but then we had a second level of certainty, which was, we are certain that whatever we do, we want success. We need this to be number one, or like, really, let's face it, we came into this knowing that we wanted to create a good podcast. We wanted it to be, hit the, hit the rankings and skyrocket. That was one of the reasons. There were other reasons as well, heaps of reasons, but we knew that that was important. Therefore, we knew that no matter what, if that was the certainty for us that we were striving for, then we would do whatever it took to do it. And we knew, we, we went in expecting to have to pivot and change and iterate to make it work. And we struck it the first time, which was great. Mm. And compare that to how a lot of, in the corporate world, will approach things. It's, it's very closed off. I, I, I have to be certain of my position and I'm protecting my position. Well, Samurai, they open... They, they come into a situation, and perhaps you can hold the microphone here for me, Matt mm. Kelly. They come mm. into the situation like with open arms. Mm. They're, very, they're very open, like, let's try. Mm. Let, let's see what happens. I think, I think this is the next iteration yeah. of the world, of the internet, of, of, of where things are going. I'm going to try it. And if it doesn't work, exactly as you said, you, you move to the next step. And what have we noticed in the GFC... When that happened, or, you know, we're hitting the tail end of it now, but all those corporate types experiencing a little bit of stress right now, or in in recent years. There's definitely challenging times, and the people who are addicted to certainty feel the most uncertainty in those challenging times when they can sit there and see what's changed. They can see the changes and they know that, you know, unless they're sitting right on top of the ladder, they've got very little control over what's about to happen. That creates huge stress, huge uncertainty. And that, that really freaks people out. I can, I can draw it. You, you, you raised an interesting point there. So a, a lot of the viewers will know about the book that I've, that I've written in the past that's been released to Amazon, which has done pretty well. And a whole lot of people said to me like, Wow, okay, how many did you sell? How did it work? Where did it hit on the rankings and all that? And I'm like, okay, that's great. Bang, 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 bang. It's done pretty good. And in, in a couple of cases, people who do live a very traditional life have said to me, oh, I'm going to go and write one. I'm, I'm going to do that. I have to do that because you did it and it worked. And so first of all, point one was they weren't going to do it until they saw someone else have success. And then they said to me, what should I do it about? What else is selling well? Like, like how, can I, how can I go and model that? Now, that's good. And we agree that modeling is great. But these people aren't willing to take a chance and bet on their passions and what they're excited about and where they can add the most value, right? And, and, and take a chance to go, hey, there's an opportunity there, I think. I'm passionate about it anyway, so I'm going to push at it and see what happens. Instead, they're trying to turn it into the science and get certainty before they even start because they're worried that the few hours that it takes them to go and start will be wasted and the experience won't be worth it for them. That's, that's a fear, a fear of the uncertain aspects of the world. Very correct, Matt Kelly. Very correct. And there's, just, there's only one other point that I want to add before we move on just now is that, dude... The internet happened. Yes. The internet happened, okay? It's like, what is it? Like 15, 20 years old or something? We're so... I don't even... It, I, I'm older than the internet. Yes. Right? So the internet is a baby. And what the internet has created is this stream economy where the content's just going like this. You know, you get your device and you're just like boom, 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 or flick, 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 flick. So stuff is changing so, so quickly. Content that you put out on your Twitter feed in 30 seconds time, it's old school, baby. Yes. Okay? The app that you made at the start of this year could, by all means, be dead. By now, okay, at the end of the year, all right? Stuff moves so fast. The world is changing at light speed. And if you're addicted to certainty, man, how many companies out there are still going, oh, shit, what about social media? I wonder if I should get a Facebook page for my company. And now they're realizing, oh, this internet thing is here to stay. We better react. But the reason that they're stuck is they love their certainty. They've done business this way for so long, and now... It's time to change, and I know you just want to rip the microphone to shreds, so so let, let it rain, Matt Kelly. Okay, so Kodak. Kodak, for all of these, like, literally, for uh, how old is Kodak? Ridiculous, right? Of years old. It's ridiculously old. Kodak, bankrupt, right? What happened? They saw digital coming up. They had the technology to make digital cameras work, and they fumbled with it for a little bit, but they were scared because they'd done it a certain way for a really long time. Their revenue model was working, and they didn't want to change. Instagram... Mm. 
Last year, bang, launch, sell for a billion dollars, a billion dollars. Kodak dead has been around forever. Instagram skyrockets. What does that tell you? It tells you that if you stick on the way that it's always been done, if you rely on the way it's always been done, and if you're not willing to adapt and you're not willing to change, then you cannot have future success with this economy. You've got to be willing to look at these different platforms, look at the mediums, and look at how the world is changing, and make it work for you. Be willing to adapt. Dave, that's why the Samurai Lounge exists, because we're like, okay, we've got the pl- we've got the podcast. It's working, there's people that care. What can we do now to better improve that for them? We could just keep doing the podcast as it is and keep rolling it out and that might work. But guess what? These people want to talk because they're ridiculous samurai. What's the platform? Okay, let's go and leverage existing technology and make it work for our audience. And that's what we're doing and that's what people, I I suspect, are loving about it. Mm. Boom. Good good, good rant, Matt Kelly. Good rant. (laughs) So what is certainty? Mm. Well, really, it's however you perceive certainty to be. And Mm. you can't... Matt Kelly... Ooh, you came up with an awesome gobble. Gobble. Had, gobble. had to squeeze a gobble in gobble. somewhere. Gobble. You came up with an awesome definition of certainty before that. I, man, I love this. This is so great. Mm. And it's, what did you say? It's something about, I've forgotten now. Hold on, hold on. It'll come to me. <laughs> do, you want, do you want me to tell you it? That's right. It's the level of stability that you assign to a particular situation. Mm. And the key word is that you assign. Yes. Okay, yes. because my idea of certainty could be different to your idea, mm. could be different to that guy in the boat. Could, we'll pass, we'll see it in a minute. Yeah, could be different to anyone else's, yeah. okay? Yeah. So think about the people in the deferred life plan. They have to be very certain that they have health insurance, that they have money, that they're going to have a safe job to go to every Monday, that the forms that they filled in last week are going to be exactly the same this week, and that's the way they think. But... Here is, I want to drop a big bombshell, Matt Kelly. I believe that what what certainty means to a samurai, how does the samurai get certainty? The samurai gets certainty by backing themselves. By backing themselves, Matt Kelly, no matter what. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. The samurai doesn't rely on on what what else is going on around them. They go, okay, I've got an idea, I've got a feeling, I've got an opinion, and I'm going to take that and I'm going to push it. For me, that is certainty. I build my own assets. I don't necessarily go... Ah, I can hang off the back of your coattails and utilize your assets for as long as possible. No, they're like, no, I know that to get the most certainty in my life, I need to build me. I need to, I mean, talk about investing in yourself, Dave, investing in your, in your capability, your knowledge, your experience, getting a coach. This is where like, if I build myself, I will always have me. Until the day I die, I will always have me and everything else could disappear, but I will still exist. So the more powerful I am, the stronger I am, the more certainty I have in my ability to make success. Because we've said it before on the podcast, what happens if you go down the path of employee, employee and 20 years from now, um, another economic crisis happens and you have to come home to your family and say, honey, or if, if you're a woman and going home saying, you know, to your stay at home husband or whatever position your husband's in and say to your family, hey, I lost my job. Right? Imagine the stress that's going to cause compared to as an entrepreneur all right, or as a samurai who has invested in themselves over many, many years and built themselves up to be super strong. Right, So they've got their samurai sword really strong. When their company goes down or, or even if they're an employee and they've got samurai within them, they can go home and look their kids in the face and say, you know what? Today, we're having hot dogs for dinner. But you know what? In 48 hours time, we're going to be getting the lobster back in. Mm. Don't you worry. Mm. Your dad, your mum is a freaking samurai. And I think that's so big, Matt Kelly. Yeah. This is the willingness to go, you know what? This is tough. Something went wrong. The economy plummeted. Like my biggest client just walked away and my risk mitigation strategy didn't come up and take over. What am I going to do? Guess what? I've done it before. I've done it before and I know what I'm doing and I trust myself and I've built myself up and I've experienced this because I am samurai. I don't sit back passively and watch. I take part and I know what I can create and there's, in- there's uncertainty now and guess what? I'm going to embrace that because, because the best thing that can come out of that for me, the best thing that can come out of uncertainty for me is, the, is my ability to go, okay, We've hit it. We've hit. We've hit it. We've hit this this intersection, right? What am I going to do? Am I going to dip down and go a different way, or could I use this as a chance to go up and to make this bigger, better, stronger, faster, even just more capable than it's ever been before? This is where you've got the chance to like skyrocket, and that's what oh, that really. 
that, think about uncertainty. That's what uncertainty gives. It gives you an opportunity to create something even bigger, even better than what you're already creating. Mm. Opportunity, Matt Kelly. And if you're addicted to certainty, well, you're going to delete distort or generalize that opportunity and it's going to because remember two million bits of information coming towards you you only process five to seven plus or five plus or minus mm. pieces of information in any one second if if you're addicted to certainty you're going to be deleting those opportunities yeah. and you're going to be that type of person that says oh it's so hard it's so hard mm. nothing ever comes my way well guess what your eyes just aren't open yeah. so mm. all right final message on this point is that is a, is a quote from Tony Robbins that I absolutely love. And he says, the only true certainty is in knowing that you are growing stronger day by day. Yeah. I love that. And you agree with that, Matt Kelly? Oh, wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. This is, that's, what, that's what certainty is for us, Samurai. Mm. It's, I, I, it, everything could have disappeared, but guess what? I'm investing in myself. I know myself and I'm growing day by by day and as long as I continue to grow I will continue to create more opportunity for myself and embrace the uncertainty alright so how we're going to go through a bit of an exercise now how to establish what you've been what your rules for certainty have been so far we're going to have a bit of a look at them see if there's any sloth in there see if there's any adjustments see if actually you know what I'm pretty stoked yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I, I'm pretty good I'm pretty good so uh, and then we're going to look if there's any, if there's any improvement, so let's go on a bit of a bit of a sloth identification, mm. bit of a fun little question asking, curious cat mission, Matt Kelly. How does that sound to you? That sounds great. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so number one, the first question you need to ask yourself, and get a pen and paper out if you're listening to this, or if you're in your car, don't use it in your mental brain. What has to happen for you to feel certainty? Mm. So right now. Right now, or up until this point, so in the past, what has had to happen for you to feel certainty? And you might come up with things like, well, I had to be right, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I had to be sure that my idea was good. I had to be sure that my idea would work. I had to be sure that they wouldn't reject me. How about that one, Matt Kelly? Mm. Yeah, that's a scary one because guess what? If you're a samurai and you're trying new things, there's always going to be people that are threatened by your success and you know that as a samurai. So if that if that is yours, it's scary because people are always going to reject you. They're always going to challenge you and, they're, and, and you're never ever going to always feel right. It's potentially achievable at one point, but it's not sustainable. Mm. That's right. It's obtainable. You can obtain the right answer. You can obtain... A good idea, you can obtain acceptance at times, but is that sustainable? You know, great question, Matt Kelly. Great, great insight. Very, very clever work there. Vaynerchuk says in one of his famous videos, one of his famous rants, that his skin is obnoxiously thick. Mm. He's, he, he must say obnoxious about 20 times in that little video. Yes. His skin is obnoxiously thick. The amount of shit that people must throw at him, and he's just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I know where I'm going. And Dave, I, I can say about Vaynerchuk specifically, he's come out and said before, I know that when I start my, on, when, I, when he was doing One Library TV, when I start that show, and I go, hey, it's Gary Vaynerchuk here, and, those, and, and people sit there and go, whoa, I came here to watch a wine show. I want to learn about Pinot Noir or whatever I want to learn about, right? I, I want to learn about wine. I don't want to get abused by some crazy guy. He knows that that's going to offend people. And guess what? He doesn't change. He never changed because it was him and you could build a passionate audience out of it. And when people are offended that they don't like it, he's cool with it. He knows. And the internet is brutal. Go and watch go, any, the next YouTube video you go and watch. Go and look at the comments. Yeah. It is, it is terrible. People are abusive on there. And he, he has been ripped... Man, we've been ripped apart. Everyone who's putting out content has been ripped apart. If you want someone to come to you and always tell you you're right, always tell you it's a good idea, and always, always be stepping forward, if you're doing anything innovative, you're going to get cut down. And that certainty is gone. <laughs> Man, we... You bring up a good point. Man, we got torn to shreds in the first couple of episodes. Do you remember one lady in particular? I'm not going to tell the full story, but she... Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be in the same room as her, Matt Kelly, I don't think. No, especially me. No, no, no. If you're putting out content that is even a little bit interesting, and so many of you of the samurai who watch this are, and if you're not, perhaps you should think about what value can I add that I should be you know, serving the world with. But 
this, in this, when you are putting this out and you do want, I'm sorry, am I leaning in too much? Sorry, Dave. We're good. Um, we're good. Th- th- those of you, th- those of you, <laughs> th- those of you who are putting out content, you know that you are going to get hit. You know you're going to be abused. You know people aren't going to like everything that you say. But if you're a true samurai, you're like, you know what? That's fine. Because when people challenge me, it means that I'm onto something. Like Jason Calacanis, this week in startups, he says, if your company does not get sued in the first three years, if someone does not threaten legal action against you, then perhaps it's not a good idea. Because if it's a good idea, people are going to be threatened by it, or they're going to want to copy it, or they're going to do something with it, they're going to want to take something from it. And if it, if it, that's if it's good. If it's not, they may not. And that's what you've got to be very aware of and be willing to fight for. Precisely, Matt Kelly. I do quite like Jason Calacanis. Mm. He's a he's a Crazy. he's a true samurai. Mm. Man, we've been pretty full on this episode. It's good. I like it. I like it. It's quite direct. Yeah. It's very it's very um it's very like yes, this is the way. And oh, like whatever. Like it's good. It's cool. It's cool. We're having fun, and we haven't had many boats yet, Matt Kelly. I'm a little bit disappointed. I really wanted to um like have a fifty foot yacht go past and like pretend that it was mine, but. Anyway, maybe that'll happen in the next sort of six minutes. Second step. So first step there is establish what has to happen for you to feel certain. Second step is to really get honest with yourself. Are those rules, are those things that have to happen, are they empowering or disempowering? Okay. Really get honest with yourself. Are they constructive or are they destructive? Are they building you up or are they tearing you down? Are are they blocking you? So this is really where, you know, you look at my question was, am I doing it right? And I said, well, that's empowering in these ways, as we discussed before, but it's also disempowering and destructive because it causes me a lot of stress and I don't attempt some things because I'm like, oh, am I going to get it right? So that's really the that's really the analysis there. And when, once you've worked out what's empowering, the empowering parts and the disempowering parts, think about what has it cost you to be so certain, to need that certainty, to be addicted to that certainty. And if you're in a corporate job, then you might go, well, wow, actually, it's cost me the opportunity to go and do all these other things, go and travel, go to Hawaii, go to the Maldives, go and see the bears eating salmon in Alaska. You know, go to space, Mm. go and network with all these people, go to the seminars in the far off places that you always wanted to go to. If you like our friend Harold from The Ideal Life, going to Thailand and talking about your beloved goldfish, or if you love lamb bacon, it's cost, it's cost you from getting even more into the lamb bacon community. Yep. So what has it cost you? Really have a look at it because Mm. my belief is that If you're honest with yourself, you'll be like, well, actually, it's cost me a fair bit. Mm. Missed opportunities. Missed opportunities. You know that, wait, I could have done this and this and this and this if only I'd embraced the the uncertainty, the the questionable nature around the, the, the world that I'm living in. I could have gone and run at that. We've done it before, Dave, where we've sat there and gone, we can either do this crazy thing or not. It would be really easy not to. We need to do it. We have to do it. And so we think about we think about that. First of all is, what does it cost you? And then I'd just like to throw in a little bonus question here. This is a little bit of secret sauce early on. If you decided to embrace the uncertainty even more, moving forward, moving forward, what's that going to give you? What opportunities are coming your way now that you're like, uncertainty, bring it on. Bring it on. I'm a freaking samurai. I'm strong. I'm powerful. Like, give me your best problem. Mm. Give me, like, please, like, sack me from my job so that I can have the opportunity to do something outrageous and create an outrageous future for myself. Give me my best problem. Mm. My best problem? Your best problem? The, what? The, the biggest problem. <laughs> make it hard. But make, 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 just give me challenges because when you give me challenges, I'm going to have to fight through it because I am a samurai. Awesome. Third question, Matt Kelly. Third question. How will you get your certainty from now on? Okay. What will you let go of today, right now, that was in the past, so that you can move forward and find, here's one, 
can you find certainty in uncertainty? Which means I am certain that the future is going to be crazy, freaking fast, stream economy, boom, 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 boom. Not sure what's going to happen in the next two hours, mm. but I'm certain that that's going to happen, so I'm cool. Mm. Wow. How about that? Mm. I like it. Mm. Matt Kelly, I want to ask the podcast viewers, what have they learned? What was the aha moment? What was the moment where you're just like, oh, got me right here? Mm. Or boom, Dave, you hit me in the center. You got me in the heart. That really that shook me a bit. Mm. What was the moment when you realized something that you hadn't realized before? When was the awareness moment? And what would you like to share? Who are you going to share that with? Uh, are you going to share it with the Samurai Lounge? Maybe. Maybe. Mm. Now, we're not we're not saying that the Samurai Lounge is for sharing every single <laughs> detail about the entire personal life of every person, but and interesting that because we don't really have any oversharers in the Samurai Land. You know those oversharers that are like, wake up and they're like, I'm cooking eggs for breakfast, but one egg broke, so I'm only having one egg. And then mm. they like got four traffic lights on the way to work, and mm. you know, oh, they, 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 they're in, they're they in the saw a duck. They saw a duck <laughs> on the side of the road as they were driving in. Yeah. Or they're in the bathroom and they're like, this bathroom is out of toilet paper. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We don't we don't have any of them. I don't even know why we're talking about that, Matt Kelly. I think we just need a bit of fun to wrap things up. So ask yourself those questions. And you know what the secret sauce is? The secret sauce is that how do samurai, like, we talked last week about significance and how significance can fuck you up if that's your number one. Well, guess what? Certainty and significance, they're the two ones that most a lot of the world go for. And as we've described, the world's going super fast. It's not as certain anymore. To really get that fulfillment, to really live outrageously, number one, or number one and two, growth and contribution, whatever order you want. Grow, become better, become more of yourself, and give more. Mm-hmm. That's, the, that's the secret sauce, Matt Kelly, and we'll be talking about those in future episodes. Yeah. Dude, I, I, don't, I don't know much more to say. Do you, I, I, I'm going to give you the microphone. You're going to you're gonna talk about the Samurai Lounge again, aren't you? I, I am going to talk about the Samurai Lounge. I am. But before I do, before I do, I've got an interesting way. So... I know that you've got a health quick tip. Yes. A health quick tip. Very oh, I've just come up with my own quick tip that I'm going to hammer you guys with right now. So, we know that to be a samurai, you've got to embrace the technology, embrace the internet, embrace the changes that are going on in this world, right? To do that, so many of you are going online to create your business. And that's something that I personally stand for is, can you draw revenue out of your passion? Because I believe that every single person watching this can. I've done it myself. You've done it yourself. We're creating, we're, we're literally creating our, our ideal lives with our passions. Okay? And that's, that, and that, that's great. That's, that's such a powerful thing if you can do that. And I know that you all can. For those of you who want to start now, who haven't yet started, it's time to go and launch your minimum viable product. If you haven't heard about the Lean Startup method, that's Eric Rees, Steve Blank, all those guys, you need to go and look at this whole Lean Startup method, the minimum viable product. What can I get live tomorrow? Here's the Samurai Lounge plug, Dave. Those of you who go and launch your product, you're going to sit there and go, oh, is it a good idea? Is anyone going to use it? Is anyone going to look at it? I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, it's probably not even worth trying. I've got 50 people in the Samurai Lounge that will, will take advantage of your trial tomorrow. The minute you launch it, you'll have 50 new users who are going to jump on there and check it out. And guess what? You're going to get amazing feedback. So not only do you all... Do I wholeheartedly believe that you need to go forward, take your passion and turn it into something real so that you can embrace the future uncertainties of the world? But I also think you should be getting involved with the Samurai Lounge, which you can get free access to, livingoutrageously.com. Sign up on the spot, get access. It's just a cool community. And those people there, I know, embrace each other because Pryor t- was testing his idea. He, he launched that Fiverr Fiver deal and like half the Samurai Lounge jumped on it. Yeah. And then it, I think I think he ended up saying, yeah, I don't really want to do this. Um, but he tried it. Mm. He embraced uncertainty. Yeah. Fair play. And, and, and Pryor could have turned around and said, oh, actually, I don't know if this is a good idea. M- maybe no one's ever going to bother. Oh, I'm not even going to bother uploading it to the website. But he did. He tried it and he told us about it. And we all thought it was an awesome thing. Mm. So, man, it's so easy to go and start. Just take the first step into uncertainty and embrace it. Eric Svensson, we might be talking to you. Anyway, <laughs> Matt Kelly, that's about it for today. Um... Great session, I thought. Great se- health tip. Oh, health, health quick tip. Very quickly, if you want a delicious treat, uh, it's coming into summer here in Queensland, go get yourself a red papaya, also known as red pawpaw. 
make sure it's nice and ripe, get a fresh lime, squeeze the lime on top of the red pawpaw, excuse me, and be prepared for a delicious treat, Matt Kelly. Sounds funky, tastes amazing. Let me know what you think. All right, dude, there's no more business, and we didn't get our 50-foot yacht coming past, but that's okay, maybe next episode. Mm. There's nothing more left to say, except if you want a boring life, go sit in a cubicle. My name's Dave Thompson, that's Matt the Freaking Man Kelly, and we will see you on the other side.